Hey everybody, we're live and we're ready for the Albers Marine Fishing and Hunting Show. Virtual this year. And it's our 15th one and we're real excited. We are gonna have everything from boats to taxidermy and in between. And we're also gonna have some vendors. It's gonna be a great show. So please stay tuned for the whole thing. We will have prizes throughout the show and please make sure you comment in the comments to enter your name in the drawing. Thank you for watching the Albert Room Show. Crawford County, a land tucked into the southeast corner of Kansas, just a stone's throw from the Missouri border. Located within two hours of Kansas City, Springfield, and Tulsa, and uniquely positioned between the Ozarks and the Flint Hills, Crawford County is home to more bodies of water than all of western Kansas combined. The area is brimming with thousands of acres of lush hunting land and fishing reservoirs. Deer, turkey, dove, quail, duck, pheasant, goose, take your pick. Crawford County is swarming with game, making it the perfect place to find your next mantelpiece. You can wind down after a long day at one of the many hunting lodges in Crawford County. We have a variety of outfitters that offer trained professional guides and a home away from home for hunters and outdoorsmen. Once hunting season is over, spring is a great time to get out on the water and fish in one of the flourishing reservoirs in the area. Crawford County is home to more than 1,000 strip pits. These old coal mines have been given a new life and they're stocked with thousands of largemouth bass, catfish, walleye, and crappie. If you love competition, show off your skills in one of the many bass fishing tournaments held throughout the year, or triumph over your hunting buddies shooting skeet at a local hunting club. You thrive in the outdoors. It's what you do, and you can do it best in Crawford County. Hey everybody, Glenn here. Uh, do a little topic on conservation. Um, it's very, very important that we take care of our waters and our wildlife and our outdoor areas. Um, we can do simple things like picking up trash, throwing your line away, um, your plastics away in the right disposal areas. Um, we need to do these kind of things so our future generations can enjoy the outdoor wildlife and, and, and fishing and all that comes along with it. So I'd like to take a chance to thank everybody for watching the virtual show. Um, we're going to get ready just to get started with the Nitro Z21 walk around. Um, this is done by me, Glenn Harrison. So um, thank you guys and let's get started. Glenn Harrison here with Albers Marine. We'll be going over the 2021 Nitro Z21, some of the new product updates, what they've done to the boats. One thing they did change is the trailer. Um, it's an all new look, looks super great. Um, did some foam padding here and that kind of stuff. It helps with the resale, especially with the fiberglass fenders. Some of the other things they did on the trailer, they did move the, the spare tire, so it's a little more accessible now instead of trying to be underneath the trailer, trying to get it out, it's up here. They also did put a little toolbox up here. You can start, store your wheel chocks, any kind of like prop wrenches, things like that. So some of the new features there for the 2021 season on the trailer. The boat didn't have too many more changes. They did give a little more leg room in between the console and the seat. It's an absolutely great boat. Um, if you guys have never ran in one, I, I recommend doing it. We'll be doing a few more segments for this virtual show. Um, due to COVID, we can't have an actual show, but I'll be doing a little more rundown on a few things on the boat. This is our 15th year doing the show. Um, so we have some good prizes. Lawrence has been with us the whole time. So Albers Marines, you'll be giving away a Lawrence Elite 7 Ti. 
Um, new end box um, without transducer, but it's a $629 value. We also have two $50 Bass Pro gift cards to give away and a clothing package from Albers Marine, which include an Albers Marine hat, a nitro hat, tracker, and a shirt of your choice. Um, and a neck gaiter. Make sure you check them out too. All right, everybody, we're gonna give a rundown of kind of what some of the things are important. What I love about this is the lid opens this way so you can access everything, your batteries. You have compartments back here. Um, I store a lot of tools, stuff that you might need in case of an emergency in a boat. First aid kits go back good back here. We have a battery switch, which um, I'll show you here. It can do an emergency jump start. If say your starting battery went dead, which is a huge feature in these boats. Like I said, we haven't started to finish rigging this one out yet. It just came off a lot. So here in the live well is one of the most important things um, to a fish tournament fisherman is their live wells. They have an exceptional live well system. They have baffles put in. Um, they got places to hang your, your call balls. And then your most important, your ruler for measuring the fish. The other thing here is the net holder that will hold your net right here. Keeps the net out of the way of everything you got, which is a, a great, great feature. So we're here at the console, which is where you spend a lot of time idling and driving. Um, it's got the pro trim on it, the hot foot. Um, you can set up with any electronics you want, Hummingbird, Lowrance, Garmin. They're all really good, it's just your preference. Um, this, I don't have the battery in so you can't see, but it's all touch panel. So um, it has a feature though, if I hit first fish, I hit the little button right here, it'll say first fish. It starts my first live well on high, on fill, and starts the recirc on medium. So what that does is I can forget about that for a while while I'm still fishing and it'll automatically set it to medium research and low fill all day long. Um, that's real important, you don't have to think about your live wells. It does have a storage underneath here for stuff. You do have a glove box storage, which you can put a lot of stuff in. The one good feature they did, they did make a change a while back was this, they installed where you can put phones, wallets, anything you might need real quick accessibility. The other thing here is the cooler. This cooler will hold ice in 95 degree heat with 20 pounds of bag. It'll hold it all day and keep your drinks cold. Comes with a trash can. Comes with a snapping sandwich tray, which is real handy to put things that you don't want down in the ice. Up here, this is where you put most of your tackle. What I like about it is you have these, it has a tray in here, has this that you can pull out. You can separate how you want to set up your tackle. Got plier holders in here. Got another back wall on here. Like I like to put a lot of my uh, dies, scents, anything mapping on the sides here and then put all my 360 boxes in the center. Does have a magnetic lure holders if you do like them. And then you do have two storages back here that are basically the same. Hey everybody, Glenn Albers Marine, your Mercury certified dealer. Um, these new engines they've come out with, this is the V8 four stroke. These are the most incredible engines I've ever driven. Um, we do service and repair all two strokes and four strokes. Um, if you have not driven a new four stroke, I highly recommend it. They're quiet, fast, and have great hole shot. Hey everybody, getting ready to start a second clip. This is Scott Tassie talking about Keeping your fish alive, very, very important Hello, thing. My name's Scott Tassie. I'm a pro staffer with Albers Marine and a Nitro State team member. I want to talk to you today about summertime tournaments and fish care. It's important that we take care of the fish in the summertime. If the water gets warmer, it's harder to keep the fish alive in the live well. So I've got several steps that I take to help me to make sure I bring all five to the skates. One, being ice, lots and lots of ice. Anytime the water gets above 75 degrees, I put ice in my live wells. Usually these are 25 gallon live wells and I'll put 10 pounds of ice in each one. When you guys are idling around waiting for the turn to begin, get away from everybody, get out in the middle of the cove, 
and fill your live wells then. That way you don't have all the exhaust and the water and everything else from everybody else's boats. First thing, fill them early and run your research the rest of the day. Don't ever put any other fresh water in unless you add more ice. They make lots of products for your live wells to help the fish. These are two products that can help you with keeping your fish alive. You should be using some kind of additive all year round, let alone in the summer when you need it the most. These are both grains or crystals. Um, these can be used in any live wells, except if you have oxygenators. If you have the oxygen generators in your live wells, then you have to use the G juice or something similar. Uh, the granules and stuff will clog the oxygenators, so you don't want to use those if you have them. Some other things that you can do is when you're fishing deep in the summertime and you do catch a fish deep, um, you need to know how to needle them. If you can't see that. I'm not the best at it because I don't ever fish very deep. So there's lots of good YouTube videos on, out there on how to do it. You can either go down through the throat or behind a fin and through. Both of them are effective if you know how to do it. Another thing if you don't want to do the needles is they make these little weights. And when the fish are on their sides in your live well, you can clip these as many as you need on the bottom fins and it will turn the fish right side up and it won't be fighting to swim around and stay alive. Um, run your research all day long. We've got really good boats with really good live wells now. There's no sense in not running pumps. As I said before, it's our responsibility to keep these fish alive and make sure that we take them all to the way and so do our part, run our research. Uh, back to the ice, what I tend to do is halfway through the day, um, if I notice the water's getting foamy or starts to get pretty gunked up from the fish, I'll actually pump out all the water and pump in fresh and re-add the ice and reuse G-juice. Anytime that the water turns back clear, you're supposed to add more of this. It should have a bluish tint to it at all times. Everybody's done this, nobody's immune to this. Everybody's hooked a fish deep. They put them in the throat, the gills, they bleed. They will bleed. The chances of them dying can be pretty good. So something that I do to help, it can't hurt, is take any kind of uh, clear green pot, like uh, Sprite, 7-Up, Mountain Dew, Mellow Yellow, and if you do hook that fish deep, you can pour the pot right on the spot that's bleeding, and a lot of times it'll clot the blood. Um, it has something to do with the citric acid, as far as I know. It doesn't hurt the fish, so it doesn't hurt to do it, so you don't end up with penalties and have a dead fish. Um, that's really my setup for summertime fishing and trying to keep all the fish alive. So hopefully this will help you out on your next tournament this summer. Up next is Becky Miner. She could be talking about ABA. It's a circuit I've spent a lot of time in fishing. Um, I want to give a shout out to Eric Kraft for uh, been hosting a lot of ABAs on Bone Creek. Um, Becky Miner will now be taking it over with Mark Moody. Um, they've ran the Stockton division for a long time. So let's see what they have to say. Uh, hi, my name is Becky Miner. I'm with American Bass Anglers, and I want to start off by saying thank you to Albers Marine for putting on this show. I will certainly miss seeing everybody uh, come into the facility, and, and because I used to talk to a lot of people, and I will certainly miss that. But thanks, Albert, for having this virtual show. Uh, and it is true that myself and Mark Moody have taken over D58, which is the Big Hill circuit and uh, we want to thank Eric Kraft for running it so many years and he did a terrific job. Uh, Mark and I also run D126 which is a Stockton division so we're going to do both of them this year and see what happens. Uh, I do want to say one thing about uh, the D58 we're going to do a taken airman fishing which I, I don't think we got to do last year but we're going to try to do it this year and I've talked to McConnell Air Force Base and we have set August the 21st uh, as the date for the taken airman fishing. So you can you can call call Albers or you can call me uh, or text me and uh, 
get more information about that. American Bass Anglers is a national circuit that is designed for the weekend angler. And it's really uh, a, per a place where you can learn to tournament fish and then you can step up if you want to, or you can stay with American Bass Anglers, uh, the AFT side, which is what we are, if you want to. The membership for American Bass Anglers is only $35, and that's for 365 days. Uh, and the, the divisions that, that I'm working with, the, the entry fee is $70 uh, per angler. You can come as a boater or as a non-boater from age 14 and up. And we do have some young people that come and fish with us sometimes. So if you have a young person that want, is interested in tournament fishing and you'd like to know more about it, why well, just give us a holler and we'll get you we'll get all your questions answered. Uh, I, we also usually run a big bass option pot and uh, some some divisions are different. Some di divisions have other option pots. So if you're gonna go to an American Bass Angler tournament and with the membership, you can go to any of them. Uh, you need to check with the director before you go so you know all the details before you get there. Like I said, American Bass Anglers is a national circuit and they have more than the AFT, which is what Division 58 and Division 126 are, are in. They have what they call a, a, an open series, which is a pro-am series. They also have uh, the, uh, what, it's called a 150 series, and that means that they're only gonna let 150 people in it. And it is a step between maybe the open series and maybe Bassmaster Elite or Bassmaster Open because the entry fee is $600 for that one. They still, those people can still fish the AFT side. I have two websites I'd like to tell you about. One of them is centralmidwestbass.com and that's an area website. It includes tournament divisions in um, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri, and occasionally there's something in there in Arkansas. But I want to emphasize the uh, circuits that are close to us in our area, and that would be Kansas, uh, D66 is run by Brent Barker. He fishes El Dorado, Wilson, and Malvern. And over in Missouri, Ricky Clemens uh, fishes Truman, Lake of the Ozarks, and Palmy. And we have a division on Table Rock this year that is, is going pretty well. Randy Chapman is the new director, and all of his tournaments are gonna go out of Table Rock. There's a couple of Oklahoma tournaments, uh, Jeff Davison is running out of, uh, on, out of Terra Miranda on Grand Lake. And there is a, an Eastern Oklahoma doing 10 Killer and Fort Gibson and Lake Eufaula, and that's being run by William Lovelace. Again, go to the website and get phone numbers for the directors. So if you want to go to one of these tournaments, you know exactly all the details that are happening. I post a lot of things on Central Midwest Bass Facebook. Uh, and all the current things that are happening, that's where, where those go. Uh, the other website is the national website, and that's AmericanBassAnglers.com. And you can see everything there is to know about the, the uh, national circuit, because it is a national circuit. Now, I, that's probably all I need to say, but I do want to tell you that, uh, I, again, I'm going to miss seeing everybody, and I am going to be at Albers Marine Saturday uh, from probably 11 to 2, uh, you can come in and see me. Uh, I'm going to be taking memberships. If, you, if you're if you interested in joining, you can come and talk to me about it. Or if you need to update your membership, you can come in. I will be here probably from about 11 until 2 in the afternoon. So don't hesitate to call or text 316-644-1454. Many anglers actually believe that when drift shad. It pushes the shad. It drifts them up against the shoreline. Well, that's not the case at all. What happens, the wind, what it does, it drifts the plankton. And in turn, shad being filter feeders, what they do, they move right into where that area of plankton is. And that's part of it. Oh, 
what is going to happen next. Our next segment is aircraft talking about motor maintenance and things about your boat, what you can do. Um, I highly recommend this video. I'm aircraft, I'm one of the technicians here at Albers Marine. And like you guys, I also fish a lot. I fish tournaments, uh, I fish for a lot of little fun stuff. Um, and there's nothing that can ruin a bad or make a trip to the lake worse uh, than having boat trouble. So I'm gonna give you a couple quick things that you can check at home uh, before you go to the lake, especially the first time out for the season uh, that will hopefully help you have a little better day. Uh, with an outboard motor, one of the things that happens a lot is you get line wrapped around the prop. And it's not necessarily your line. It's something that somebody fishing from the bank broke off or somebody got hung up in a tree and broke and there's, there's line, it gets wrapped around your prop and it can knock the seals out. So I'm gonna show you how to pull the prop, check the lower unit lube for water, uh, because if you have water in your lower unit lube, it can end up, if you don't change it, it'll be a full lower unit replacement instead of just a seal replacement. Uh, and then we're gonna hit a, a little bit about wheel bearings to make sure you don't have a wheel bearing failure on your way to the lake. So we have here, uh, a four-stroke mercury motor and we're just going to take the prop off because you really can't see what whether there's line there without taking the prop off so the first thing you're going to do is is make sure the keeper tabs are folded out and then I just use a two before to keep the prop from turning proper size wrench make sure you don't drop the keeper down inside and then slide the prop off and we can inspect the inside of the hub make sure the plastic part of the hub is not cracked um, and this one looks like it's in good shape This is the thrust washer, we remove it. Now we're in and, and we're looking to see if there's any line wrapped in this area because this is the seal that, uh, that we're worried about. If line gets wrapped around the prop, it'll take that seal out. You'll get leakage of lube from there, but water can also get in. So because we're worried about water getting in, we wanna pull the lower plug Sometimes this plug is located to the side of the, of, of the lower unit on the outside down low. This, the newer style, is behind the prop. And depending on horsepower, it can be behind the prop. There is a seal on this plug. Uh, you don't want to lose when you do this. A gasket, if you will. And we just, whoop. We just wanted to check and see what the lube looks like. This is good and clean. It's notice the bluish color. Um, there's, it's not milky. If it had uh, a milky color to it, we would be worried about water. Uh, this one has no water in it. Um, it's not dark, so it gives no indication that it needs to be changed. This one's in good shape. So when we put it back together, Put that in, tighten it just a little, and then we're ready to reinstall the prop. When you put the prop washer back on, make sure you get the taper towards the tapered part of the shaft and the step towards the prop. If, if the splines are dry, these have pretty good lube on them still, grease on them still. Uh, if they were really dry, we'd want to put just some, some basic grease on them. Reinstall the prop, the keeper, and the nut. Using the two before so I can tighten it. You reach a point you have to pull it a little bit tighter to make the tabs align on a flat spot. 
it's just good and snug. Uh, you're not trying to uh, make it super tight, um, but it needs to be firm. And then fold one ear against the nut so it can't back off. That takes care of the basis of checking for line around the prop shaft and checking the lower unit lube. If it had had water, I can't impress upon you enough that you need to immediately get the lube drained out because if the water this time of year, if it were to freeze, that freezing action will break the case of the lower unit. And instead of a $200 prop shaft seal replacement, you're looking at three to five thousand dollar lower unit replacement. So it's very, very important that you check the lower unit loop for water. Moving around, the other thing that we want to talk about is wheel bearings. This is a really quick test. Um, it's not foolproof, but it gives you a good indication of whether you have problems that are about to arise. And it's something you can do real easy at home in the garage before you ever go to the lake. Take a jack and jack your, jack your boat up one side at a time or one wheel at a time and just spin it. It should be quiet. There should be no, no rumbling sound. And then what we look for or what we're listening for is if that bearing has had water in it and created rust, there's like little bumps inside the bearing and it creates almost a, a rumbling sound like thunder. Um, the louder the rumble, the closer the wheel bearing is to failure. So if they're nice and quiet like this one is, you're ready to go to the lake. That's our tip here today. So have a good time. Our next video deals with bud baits. If you haven't been there, tons and tons of tackle. Bud's Baits has also given away two bonehead tackle packs to all you crappie lovers. These are a must have when you go crappie fishing. Take a look. Oh my gosh, guys, you guys, I, I need some help. Yeah? I'm going fishing at Stockton Lake off the beach and I need a surf rod. Surf rod? Right now, 16 foot surf rod, right 16 now. Foot? I got 16 one. foot. Right you got one? one? You really did. Right you really right got one. No kidding. Oh my, the holy grail. <laughs> oh my. Man, I love these for dabbling the old crappie off the boat. I like it. I love it. I don't think I can stand any more of it. <laughs>Hey, this stuff is Stinger, guys. We're at Buzz Bait in Carthage, Missouri. I, I just wanted you guys to, to meet the crew here, part of the crew. We've got Emma Grace, we've got Luke, Smiley, and then we've got Sam, the man. So, and of course, the legend herself, Miss Gloria. I tell you what, I wanted you guys to get to know how Buzz Bait came about, where it started from, and what what's made it stick around for 55 years. The way it all started out in the very beginning is that my husband never did like to um, have a boss and didn't want no one, he didn't want to work for anybody, so he decided that he would um, uh, just start his own business. And of course he got looking around and he decided that uh, uh, his hobby was fishing, hunting, trapping, anything to do with that. And so he decided that he just stick with that for his business, the bait shop. Wow. And so... Um, every man's dream. Every man's <laughs> dream. And, and you know, a lot of people don't play, uh, uh, do the things that they play with, but Bud always just did, and he enjoyed it so much. We first started out, we didn't know Christ. And uh, it wasn't until we uh, had our daughter who uh, at the age of four led us to the Lord. Uh, Bud and I both were saved at the age of 30 and we'd already been in the bait shop several years at that time. And, um, and then we realized that uh, this bait shop was just a family oriented place. Um, after uh, my husband went to home to be with the Lord 2000 and uh, 
After that, I kind of run the bait shop on my own for about maybe 10 years. I remember that. And, and uh, David came in and, and helped me on Saturday if I didn't have him, which David is my son-in-law. Then I lost my sight. I can see images and movement, but I knew I couldn't run the equipment. After all that happened, um, I started, uh, of course we had grandchildren, we had Sam first. Oh yeah. And uh, I tell you, he was a blessing. Oh yeah. And he decided that he wanted to be a part of the bait shop, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And that was marvelous. So then I had my little Luke. <laughs> and. Uh, he, he decided that he wanted to be part of the bait shop, so he started working here. And they worked for me just off and on, didn't you? Before After school and after school and weekends. Stuff. Yeah. Of course, when little Emma Grace came along, I had already lost my sight. I have never seen her face. I, I can see the images of it. But one day in heaven, I, whoop, I thought, all my children how to do change and to be courteous to the customer when a customer come in they were right unless they did something wrong sure that uh, wasn't up to God's standard what would you tell anybody out there that that is trying to start a business that what would, would you recommend their foundation be in the Lord as well I recommend that wholeheartedly I uh, if you don't have him Christ number one in your life then you, then none of it, as nothing else counts, that's for sure. You've got to put him number one in your life and then he'll take care of everything else even though like things happen to you, he'll always be there to help you through it. You bet, you bet. Oh, what is this place? I don't know, it don't look much like a fishing store to me. It's like somebody's old abandoned warehouse. Told me it's supposed to be a nice fish and tackle shop here, bait shop, everything, the full nine. Looks like an old barn. Let's see. Holy cow. Did you look at this? Man. They got it all. Let's go check out who's behind all this and what, what this really is supposed to be. Come on. Well now, who's the boss around here? That, would that be you? Sure. How you doing, brother? Stinger Stanley. How are you? What's your name, young man? David Shoemaker. David Shoemaker. First of all, I want to say thank you to Stinger and to Peyton and for you guys coming down, taking time off your busy fishing schedule, <laughs> you know. Especially this close to back to school time, we really appreciate right. you taking you time to, to give a little preview of what we're doing here. Uh, we are uh, about to open up to retail here on uh, about the 23rd, 24th, 25th of August to give the public a little sneak peek opening. Uh, we'd like to have people come in. We'll show you around, see what we've got. And the uh, plan is we have a store in Carthage, been there 55 years, and the plan is to bring the inventory over here and open up to the public and see what happens and get a little closer to the Joplin market serves the fishermen in the community here. Is there anything that you don't have? There's a few things we don't have yet that we plan to add, some uh, Quantum and some Shimano and a few other brands that we're hoping to bring in. We'd like to have the customer's input on what we stock next, you know, what we can bring in. Yes, yeah, so the plan is to only have new merchandise, new inventory here. And again, as I said, we want to have a broad selection and serve, serve the fishermen in the community. All right, yeah. I do appreciate your slogan, the faith, family, and fish. Well, yeah. It's important to have the priorities in order. Obviously, this would not be possible without nope. faith. This is Sam. Sam's kind of the grandson of uh, Bud and Gloria, and he's kind of going to take over and run with the Joplin store a little bit. Good. Of course, I have my nephew, Andrew. We couldn't do the business without him. Andrew. We're really dependent. On Andrew's That's, input. Yeah, uh, get in there, Andrew. The scenes, but also the product knowledge. And uh, my son, Luke, who's about ready to go off to college, but he'll be popping in and out, helping out a little bit. Yeah, this is one way to do it. Yep. Yeah, of course, Luke. you can't leave out Emma Grace because when you look at the future, this is the, uh, the farthest end of the future that we can see. I've got my wife 
Melissa and Andrew's wife Rachel's here with us today too and uh, we're just thrilled with the opportunity to be able to kind of share our faith and share our family with the fishing community in the, in the Joplin area and want to provide a service that hopefully the community will respond positively. It's been great getting to know these folks here at Bud's Bait. I tell you what, David and his family are incredibly blessed people and they're, they're great to be around. They've got a great store, a great shop. I tell you what, man, in the future coming up, what I want you to do is I want you to be looking at the page, Bud's Bait page, because they're gonna have some giveaways and some great things are gonna be coming up in the future for Bud's Bait. Thank you and have a great day. Hey everybody, the next video we got is derailed. Um, you definitely need to check out this store. I have uh, remodeled my house once and, and bought a ton of my stuff there. Derailed is um, giving away a framed outdoor picture. Um, it'll be showing here. Make sure you comment to get a chance to win it. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Greg Smith with the original location of Derailed Commodity. We're actually the home location for 16 stores across the Midwest, but we're unique in the fact that we're the original location. We're located kind of out in the country here in Braselton, Kansas, and we recognize that in this area, the outdoors is important, hunting and fishing. So we've done something a little different. What we've tried to do is create quite a bit of lodge style and rustic furniture uh, about this time of year, actually, we sell a lot of it too, hunting lodges, uh, including we even sell lots of mattresses and, and things like that. But what we try to do is help people so they don't have to go to a bigger city to buy this rustic furniture and things for lodge type living. And it's way, way, way less money here. If you look around, when, whenever you come, you'll always have a big selection to see. It's fun. We give you a great shopping experience. And we have everything from even if you want to remodel your house in a rustic style. We have plenty of rustic vinyl plank and, and paneling, even outdoor type of paneling. Uh, lots of furnishings like these outdoor paintings, outdoor clocks, things like that. Uh, you name it, we're here to help here in Brazelton, Kansas. Uh, if you come out, you'll be glad you did. Shooting a commercial is a lot of work for Kevin Van Dam, Stacy King, and Bill Dance. But they're fishermen, not actors. First, you have to get down the basics. For Pete's sake, how much film we got? You have to learn to nod. Action. It's important when you're giving fishing tips to show confidence by nodding your head. That's a good fish is next. Um, these guys are YouTube famous, funny, fun to watch videos about fish. Hey guys, welcome back to That's a Good Fish. Peyton Bennett right here. I'm gonna... There he is. Giant. A giant. I'm not kidding, get the freaking net. Come on, let's get it. Not bad, not six pounds, but you know. Just switched, I thought the frog bite would be on. It's not. So, put the big head wobbler on, blue color. This is another one close to 20 inches. Beautiful fish. Catching them on these countdowns in the Miracle Mile is a blast. Oh, 
Get the net. Go. I'm not kidding. Get, get this. Come here. I got you, bro. Yeah. That's a nice fish, folks. Here, see wow. It. Look at that. Let me see. When uh, Tyson said he's never going to break his line on Brady, he's never done it before. I guarantee you I'm not going to break on Brady because I don't set the hook so hard. He just broke it, so uh, it wasn't a fish, though. Stud on the old slab slabber. Oh, slab daddy. Nice fish, bro. I don't think I've ever said pretty this much in my life. I don't even know if I call my wife pretty this much as these fish, but... If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, hit give us a thumbs up, and... Uh, as always, Peyton Bennett out, that's a good fish. Hey everybody, our next segment's talking about Tracker Off-Road in the 570. Um, kind of new to us, but some great new things coming out with them. Hey everybody, Glenn Harrison here with Albers Marine. I uh, want to talk something new. We, we started carrying um, some ATVs, some PTVs, um, and some side-by-sides. We're kind of excited about this, something new to us, um, but feeling we're willing to take on the challenge. Um, we have some of the, one of the top techs in the world to work on them. So. Um, this is the 570 um, EPS. It's an electric power steering. It's new to it. Um, it does have the camouflage with the true timber, um, which is a, an upgrade and a cool option to have. Um, it has 11 inch ground clearance of class leading and 10 inches of travel on your, uh, on your, on your suspension. Um, you can adjust it, your suspension, to tighten and loose depending on how you like your drive. Um, other than that, these things are incredible. Um, great for if you're out hunting, out on a farm, doing some work. Um, make sure you check these uh, these vehicles out. All right. Next, we have Jim Davison, one of the all-time greats around this area. Um, won numerous, numerous boats and tournaments. This is a must-see video. I'm Jim Davison. I'm a part of this virtual boat show that we got going on here. I wanted to let you know about a little bit of my background. I started fishing terms in 1972, and my very first boat sponsor was Homer Albers, Albers Marine in 1986. I went out and visited him one day, and we kind of got acquainted and hit it off pretty good, and it just went from there. I want to thank Roseanne and Glenn, and he would be so proud of you two, of what you brought this company to be. Number one boat dealership in the state of Kansas, in my opinion. All right, what they wanted me to talk about was spinnerbait fishing. With the short time I've got, I'm gonna break it down to cold water spinnerbait fishing. The first thing we're gonna go through real quick, and all this is available out of Albert Green. They've got a real nice tackle shop out there. So you need to go visit that if you need something to fish with. I got a Lose Team Light Custom Reel and a Lose custom team light or team custom rod. It's six nine, it's one I helped develop for, for lose. I got 14 pound fluorocarbon. I got orange with spare baits. This rod has got a lot of backbone but it also has a lot of tip. So this is to me this is what I need to place with that. It's been my go-to rod for 20 years. Anyway the spinner baits I'm going to be throwing, or showing you, talking to you about throwing, is War Eagle. And I, I don't use a lot of colors. I use what I call Stockton Special. And what it is, a purple shad with a little yellow tied into it. And the lime chartreuse and white spinner bait and white spinner bait. That's about the size of it. I use a 2 lot Yamagatsu trailer hook, always. You cannot fish this bait the way I'm going to tell you how to fish it without that. Blade combinations, when it's sunny, I go gold, silver, or silver, gold. When it's cloudy, I go gold, copper, or gold, gold. So that's what we're using. And now we're gonna get into how I fish this. 
I'm fishing for the same fish that you fished for with a rope or a jerk bait. They're suspended fish out there in that 15, 18 foot of water, suspended up in that 10 to 12 foot of water. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw that bait out there and we're gonna tight line and let it drift down. And we're gonna get it down there in that eight to 10 foot of water and we're gonna slow roll that thing back. And I mean, the real gear ratio on this reel is 6.5 to one. So you really got to slow it down. That's the biggest thing on fishing this bait. The blade sizes, I use three eighths ounce head, but the blade sizes are four and a half and a three and a half. That allows that bait to go slow, but I keep I can keep it up in that 10 foot range with the spinner bait. If you go with a half ounce head, it brings that bait down too fast and you have to reel it too fast to keep it up in that 10 foot water column. This is more of a clear water bait setup and a more of a clear water technique. When you get in the muddy water, it, it just won't work. There's other techniques that work better. So that's my whole oh, and The last thing is the bite on this bait will either be a little tap like a crappie jig tap or just be the blade stop turning. And it's a good way to catch big fish. You won't catch a lot of fish, but you'll catch big fish. This is water temperature from 40 to 45, 46 degrees. After that, you can bring that bait up a little bit higher in the water column and don't have to work it so slow. So that's my advice for this. I want to thank Albert Green for having me out there or having me on this virtual uh, boat show. And so I want to thank my wife for running the camera and we'll talk to you later. The next video is Nature's Arts tax Taxidermy. Um, he does all kinds of incredible mounts. Nature's Arts giving away a $150 gift card. Make sure you comment get put in the drawing. So my name is Blake Van Lewin. Uh, I run Nature's Art Taxidermy. I'm located here in Arma, just north of Pittsburgh on 69 Highway. You can look me up on Facebook or look up my website, uh, naturesart-taxidermy.com. And so I'm gonna kind of talk to you kind of briefly about things that you need to know. Uh, so first thing is whenever you go out hunting, you kind of need to prepare yourself. Um, if you're out deer hunting, you need to kind of learn how to keep out of deer. So I suggest that you watch videos, like before you go out on YouTube. So like you kill your deer, you're going to get it, <clears throat> take your pictures, um, field dress it, and then go ahead and start caping that deer out. Uh, the, the idea is to get the, the cape off the body, to get it off that heat, to get it in the freezer. I uh, just throw it in a bag, put it in the freezer, or get it right to me. Um, that way everything's safe. Uh, birds. Uh, typically, I kind of kind of tell guys if you can put one BB to the back of the head. Uh, if not, just shoot it the best you can. Um, I can fix a lot of things on birds. Uh, you can cover up uh, broken wings and bones and stuff like that. Um, I do suggest that you retrieve it yourself. Maybe not have a dog to go get it. Um, <clears throat> whenever you freeze those, I like to wet down paper towels and wrap the head and the feet because those things get freezer burnt uh, the quickest. So do that and then put it in a bag or even tin foil works on those same places. Um, on fish, I don't do fish anymore, but on fish, I always told guys to uh, take good pictures when you first catch it so you can see all the spots. Take your length and your girth measurement and weigh it. And then wrap it in a wet towel and get it in the freezer as soon as you can. Um, the next thing is to think about how you want to mount it. Uh, birds, I can put them in any position. So think flying or standing, just wherever it is that you're going to put out in your house, however you want to view it, look at it. Uh, get creative, look online, see what you can find. Um, <clears throat> deer, you're pretty much got to be thinking left or right, where you want to look in, what you want to do in. Uh, most forms are a little bit different, but pretty close to the same. Um, on animals, you can think about if you want them going up rocks, if you want to hang it on the wall or put it on the base, uh, things like that. Uh, the next thing is you get them home and you get them, you get them hung and everything. I always kind of suggest on, on these guys because they have fur to kind of put it up high because you don't want to touch it. 
You don't want to pet it like your, your cat at home um, because you've got oil on your hands and as soon as you push that hair down, it's pushed down. You can't fluff it back up. So you kind of don't want to even dust it, but if you do hit it, just kind of lightly hit it on top. You can dust the eyes and the nose and the mouth if it's open. Any of the rock, you can dust that. Um, on birds, same kind of thing. Kind of stick it high so people can't touch it. It's not the best thing to touch taxidermy work. Um, but it is art. So take a moist rag and lightly touch the tops of them. Uh, you can go with the grain of the feathers. On wood ducks, they have these long feathers there. You typically have to kind of go up with those. Um, but I just use a just a moist towel on that kind of stuff, or one of those fiber towels. Um, any of the stuff that they're sitting on, you can definitely dust that with whatever you want to dust. Um, on deer, I always use a moist rag on them too. Go with the grain of the hair, always. And then after I do that, I use this stuff here. You get a co-op. It's actually for horses. And you spray it on and you wipe it with your hand. And then you wipe it off with a dry towel. And then that'll kind of give it like a sheen look. Um, on fish, you can use a pretty wet towel if you want to to get in the grain of the of the uh, of the scales and wet it down really good. And then if it's still kind of dusty and the gloss quite isn't there, you can get this through McKinsey Taxidermy Supply, um, or you might be able to use a varnish or a gloss, but you want a really glossy look. And then you can actually just take it outside and literally just. Spray it on like that. It'll give that nice glossy look. And basically it'll cover up all that dust and stuff, but it'll give it that look like that refreshed look to it. Uh, once again, I don't do fish, but uh, you're welcome to take that as a trick. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll try to post up stuff on my Facebook, you know, if you ask for it. But uh, look me up, naturesart-taxroom.com or Check me out on Facebook. But when the sunlight starts bearing down, it's instinct for fish to move out just a little bit deeper. And there's several other baits that seem to work extremely well. And let me show you a few of them. There's quite a few of them. You can take, you can take, well, let's see. And get you a good handful of them. And as I said, there's several different baits that seem to work well. You can just take every one of them and sling them as far as you can sling them. You ain't believe that. Hey, gum it. Take me a month to get all these things undone. Ah. Have you guys ever had a problem with tackle organization? This next video by me is to try to help get you guys organized. Hey everybody, Glenn here again with Albers Marine. Um, we want to talk a little bit about tackle. Um, and fish organization and getting your equipment ready for the next year. Um, that's something I do every single year. I take the time at the winter, unload the boat, um, look through all my stuff, just kind of recompile everything and organize things the way I need it to be for the next season. I know after a tournament you have baits laying everywhere. Um, let's try to start getting a good habit of putting your baits up after you're done using them. I think some examples I have here, this is just one, these are strictly how I organize some of my baits. These are just pro rock crawlers. Um, that's strictly what's in this box. Um, seems like a lot, but um, that's the way I, I, I like to do I like these crankbait boxes, especially for my crankbaits. Um, another box here, this is like Rapala's DT6s, DT10s. I try to do my crankbaits similar in either by brand or depth running or what type of season or what kind of condition. Um, so I know that if I need to get my Rapalas or if it's in spring and I want to throw it early in the spring, they're labeled on the edge too. So they sit in my, my garage like that on storage bins. Um, the other thing I try to do is I try to keep everything super clean in here. Um, I try to find rust inhibitors, they make little packets step to keep your stuff from rusting. I do try to take good care of your lures because they don't go down in value. Um, this is just a terminal box. This is just my finesse stuff. I mean you can see every year I, when I'm done I, I mean I take every weight, weigh them, put them back in the right spots 
and, and make sure that everything's in the right spot for me to fish the next year. I have probably 35 rods and reels. Um, when I'm relining for the new year, I strip everything off, clean my reels, grease them, and we'll have another guy talk about that a little bit in the segment. But when I go to put line back on, I can never remember. I know I got a 7.4 heavy for flipping, a 7.4 heavy for something else, and I might throw one with 20 pound and one with 16 pound. So I did find this, and you can use any kind of method you want to, to label them, but this just goes on your rod. It tells me what pound test it is, 16 pound test. Um, they make this in 20s, 10s, 12s, um, anything like that. And it just goes on your rod, and then it kind of lets you know that, hey, I have 16 pound on this, on this reel. So if I need to make a quick change, I can from 20 to 16 and stuff like that. Um, so th this has been a big lifesaver for me, especially with the rods and reels I have. So like we've talked about hard baits, you know, like I said, I try to go by brands, uh, like jerk baits. I have a special season where I have Mega Bass just strictly in one, and then I have Lucky Crafts and Smithwicks. When it comes to plastics, this is the one for, this is the hardest thing to do. So what I try to do is, like if I have Yum Tubes, they all stay together in a package. Um, you know, lizards. I may not have a ton of lizards, but I try to keep them in one segment. So I can go and pick out what I need for the type of season. Um, it's about just being organized. It, you know, my system may not work for somebody else, and you have to find the right system. But I, I recommend you trying to organize your tackle. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you fish better. Just doing to have more confidence to go do it. With today's technologies and graphs, this video here is going to give you some insight onto the new Lorance products. Um, definitely a must watch and a lot to learn about. Hey guys, Kyle Kister here coming at you from the Albers Marine Virtual Boat Show. Uh, I'd like to highlight some new Lorance products for 2021. Um, first in the lineup we've got the Elite FS or fishing system. Um, this unit will feature full networking capabilities um, just like Lorance's previous model, the TI-2. Uh, Elite FS will feature a touch screen in the 7 and 9 inch models. Also this unit will have soft keys on the side as you can see here. Um, it will have zoom in and out for your mapping. It will have a quick uh, waypoint button. Um, and the power button at the very bottom of the screen will be uh, for the menu settings and on and off. Um, this unit comes with CMAP Contour Plus. It's preloaded with 8,900 lakes and one foot contours. Uh, you can also use with this unit the active imaging 3-in-1 transducer uh, for side imaging and 2D sonar. Um, if you're a Navionics guy, it has um, a place to put your SD card here um, so you can upload your Navionics maps and uh, download your waypoints. Features a NEMA 2000 network for your point one antenna uh, Ethernet connectivity. If you want to do multiple graphs, the rear or the the bow and the the stern of the boat. So also on the Elite FS, uh, it has full networking capabilities. So that way, if you were a Lorance Ghost guy, if you're a Point One antenna user, um, you can deploy your power poles. Also new for 2021 is the Active Target. Um, it's a forward-facing sonar. Uh, it, had, it comes with a mount. You can mount it either on the head of the ghost trolling motor or you can mount it on the shaft. It has an 18 degree cone angle. Um, you can do down imaging with it, forward imaging with it, or scout mode so you actually turn the transducer sideways. It enables you to see fish in live time. So um, if you're having trouble when you get to a waypoint um, and you want to hit your target in the very first cast, this is the thing you need. Uh, it's, it's definitely all in live time. So Lorance came out with a software update 20.1 for you guys that already have the HDS Carbon or HDS Live units. And what you'll need to do is get your SD card, uh, go to lorance.com, um, you're going to click help and support and you're gonna to go to software updates. You need to click that drop down box and download 20.1 software version for your unit. So if you have an HDS Live, you'll go to that tab. HDS Carbon, you go to that tab. The Elite FS is coming straight out of the box set up to run Active Target. 
Okay guys, so as far as the connectivity of your Elite FS units, um, they work wirelessly together. So you're able to connect more than one unit and they will talk to each other. They will share waypoints, they will share sonar. Um, you can, you can, like I talked to, talked about earlier, you can hook a point one antenna up, which gives you within a couple of feet of your waypoint. So you, you hit a, your, your island down the lake, you see a brush pile or you see a rock pile and you hit waypoint and you decide you want to go back to it in a year. You can get within one foot of that waypoint at any time with CMAP Contour Plus, which that will come preloaded on your unit. Um, so let's just talk about Active Target for just a little bit. Um, basically, Active Target is going to replace your live site. Um, there is an update available, like I was talking about earlier, with the 20.1 software. Um, Active Target will give you two different mounting versions. So, as shown here, you can mount this transducer on the side of the head of your trolling motor. You can do down and you can do forward. Um, so, like when we go to Stockton, for example, and we get close to a brush pile and we want to scan to see if there's any crappie in there, it's going to show you live images of those fish swimming. Um, you can also turn it down if you're going to fish vertical, um, like you table rock guys, you like the Ozark guys, when you get over the tops of trees, and you want a vertical jig, this is perfect. Um, also, you can spin that to where, the transducer to where you can do a scout mode. So if you're fishing a little bit shallower water and you come up on a rock pile, you can see anything in front of you. And you can set the depth um, to up to 70 to 80 feet. Um, the clarity is unbelievable. Also, um, just to clarify, the active target is capable of running on HDS Carbon, HDS Live, and Elite FS units. So something else I'd also like to mention here is um, Lawrence is calling these, these units the ultimate fishing system. They're going to tie your entire boat in together. So you're going to have connectivity to your sonic hub for your radios, uh, listen to music and your speakers, the weather. Um, you're going to be able to run your Lawrence Ghost off of them. You're going to be able to deploy your trolling your power poles off the back of your boat with them. So, um, as far as uh, where to find these units at, um, so here at Albers, they get orders in all the time for Lawrence gear. Um, if you guys are interested in taking a look at some Lawrence products, whether it be Hook Sevens or uh, HDS Carbons, Live Sights, Ghost Trolling Motors. Um, Give Roseanne, give Joe, give Glenn a call, um, ask them some questions. If they can't get it answered, they know the people that will. Um, and if you guys would, uh, stay tuned. We've got a short video on the active target fishing system. Thank you. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. The best fish finding tools, from chirp sonar and fish reveal to active imaging and new active target live sonar, and complete touchscreen control from your trolling motor to your big motor. For a limited time, building the ultimate fishing system will be easier on your wallet.
Upgrade to HDS Live with a ghost trolling motor, active target sonar, or live sight sonar, and save up to $600. For a good jig on the market, Motion Fishing is a new jig out that you must have in your boat. Hey everyone, Lou Drew here. I want to welcome you to the 2021 Albers Boat Show today. I want to talk to you about Motion Fishing Company. Have you heard of us? We make hand-tied jigs, plastics, and chatterbaits out of Lee Summit, Missouri. We're trying to give you some of the best quality products money can buy. From our trimmed up skirts, to our hand-tied skirts, to our big, stout Gamagatsu hooks, and our innovation in our jigs. We got a new keeper on our jigs, guys. When you put your plastics on, I'm just going to thread this up on here like this. Bend it down. Bend that keeper down. That plastic is not going anywhere. You can fish plastics longer. It's just some of the things Motion does to make your day out on the water more simple. We also have football jigs and finesse jigs for every jig fishing need you could possibly have. We have 3 8 half and 3 quarter ounce flipping jigs with a 5 aught Gamagatsu heavy duty flipping hook in them. We have half ounce and 3 quarter ounce football jigs with a little more medium Gamagatsu hook in those that keep fish pinned up really well. And in our finesse jigs, we have a 4 aught thinner Gamagatsu hook, but it's still big enough that you can get those bigger fish to your boat. Motion makes some of the best colors on the market, guys. The Sardis Craw has to be a go-to when you're around these clear water lakes like Stockton, or if you're over in a dirtier Kansas lake, I like Bruiser or Mo Craw. They seem to get the job done for me. We have the Motion Stick Plastic, which is a stick worm, a Cinco style bait. It works really well on a wacky rig or a shaky head. We have our Penny Crawl. It is our finesse jig trailer. Minimal action on the smaller jig. I'm going to show you two baits today that have yet to be seen by the public. This is the Beaver Guy. It's our flipping bait. It's a beaver bait we make. It's thicker. It's made with flippers in mind. It's going to hold your hook better. It's a little bit larger. It's going to help you get a little bit bigger bite when you're out flipping. I have the Brush Pile Guy. It's our creature bait. It has big flappy legs and moves lots of water. I really like to throw this in the brush pile to stock in the summertime when the fish are really active. Where can you find our jigs? Albers carries them over in their tackle section. They have several of our jigs, but if you want our full lineup, go to www.motionfishingco.com. You can also find us in other various retailers as Everhart's and over around Pomney Terre Lake. On our website, we also carry Etow's custom wake baits and square bills, which are custom painted to help you catch more fish here in the Ozark region. You can also contact us on Instagram where we have almost 60,000 followers and we give weekly tips to help people catch more fish. I hope you're enjoying your time here at the Albers Boat Show and I hope you check out Motion Fishing Company. Until next time, this is Luke Ruth. Y'all have a good day. Hey everyone and welcome to the 2021 Albers Boat Show. I'm Luke Ruth. I'm here. I'm a part of Albers Marine and Motion Fishing Company. I want to talk to you about finesse jig fishing year round on Stockton Lake. It's some of my favorite fishing to do, especially with a Motion Fishing Company 5 16 or 7 16 ounce finesse jig. Sardis Crawl is my favorite color on Stockton Lake, but let's talk about where I fish this. In the early spring, I'm going to be fishing this around an old offshore structure, rock piles, smaller brush piles, around secondary points when those fish are really moving in to spawn. Um, as we get closer to the spawn, I can take this same jig, I can go flip it around some shallow rocks or lay downs. It's really going to get a few more bites than a bigger jig and sometimes it captures those big fish that aren't wanting as big of a meal. Summertime, I'm going to opt for, I'm going to opt for the flipping brush jig in the summertime. Now, there's still a place for the finesse jig on some bluff ends and on those rock piles, but in those brush piles of Stockton Lake, you can't be a motion fishing company flipping jig. I'm usually going to be throwing PB Jelly or one of the Flash Mop series trying to get the biggest bites I possibly can out of the brush piles. Now let's talk about fall time. That is when I feel like the finesse, spring and fall is when the finesse jig really, really shines. It's going to catch you some bigger fish on Stockton Lake. What am I going to look for? I'm going to look for the same stuff. I'm going to look for rock changes a little shallower in that 6 to 10 foot zone. I'm going to throw that finesse jig and drag it down those rock changes or that chunky rock. I'm going to try to catch those bigger than average jig fish. You can still catch some of the brush piles. This finesse jig comes through brush piles better than any finesse jig I've ever thrown in my life, guys. I can throw it in a brush pile, and I only get hung up two or three times a day with this finesse jig compared to more with others. If you really don't want to get hung up, check out our flipping brush jigs at Motion Fishing Company. They do a great job of coming through the brush. Phenomenal job. In the wintertime, 
you really have to slow down with the finesse jig. You have to milk it slower on those same rocky piles and ledges and stuff. You have to really, really, really slow down and almost let your jig sit on those things. Those fish are not very aggressive, and but they will still eat the jig all the way through winter. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to find me on Instagram, at Luke Root Fishing. I'm always there. I'm always willing to help out. If you're coming down to the lake or want some jig fishing advice, I'm always more than happy to help. Check out Motion Fishing Company. Thank you for coming to the 2021 Albers Boat Show. I hope you're having fun and have a good rest of your day. The infamous, famous John Bennett on Truman Lake um, won lots and lots of boats. going to give us some of his tips about crankbaits on it. So gotta watch this one hi i'm john bennett i've uh, been fishing with albers marine for about 15 years i was uh, with them actually when they were uh, running pro craft uh, if you'd like to try some of the new nitros over there i would go over and talk to them they're just like family and they've uh, they've really been good to me over the years um, I would be doing this for my boat, but I have a new Z20 ordered with the, the new four-stroke Mercury and it'll be in here in a few weeks, so we're doing this from my uh, house. So I'm going to talk today about a couple of things, just about Truman Lake real quick, and then about some crankbait kind of things that I use on Truman Lake. Uh, one of the things about Truman is I was lucky to grow up uh, in that in that area before the lake was actually flooded, so I've uh, fished shallow with a partner of mine, Daryl Reach. And, and then uh, my son, Peyton Bennett, who's part of That's a Good Fish. And uh, so I got to fish shallow all the time when I was growing up. And Truman, I think, is a little bit different lake than a lot of the lakes. You can compete shallow almost all year round. And what that means is uh, you're, you're probably, as, as Peyton told me one time when we, we were younger, he said that really limits your uh, bait selection you need to bring in the lake on the lake. And so I think it does. There's some deep water fish that uh, are winning tournaments now. But uh, for the most part, you can still compete uh, fishing shallow almost all year long. And as long as you can compete, I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, so a couple of things that I, I would talk about um, is I like to follow the crankbaits through the year. So uh, early in the year, I'll throw a big one, uh, like a, a balsa B3, somewhere in there, there's a B3. And then as, as after the spawn, because I think they, they eat something really big in the spawn for a crankbait uh, and pr prior to the spawn. And then post-spawn in June, uh, a few years ago, uh, when we were going through the bass virus there and you could catch 14, 15 pounds and actually have a shot at things. Now with the uh, lake being a lot better and with the current on when the lake's up, they can catch current fish. So there's bigger sacks being caught in June. But when the lake's kind of normal, uh, and I was young and really stupid. I'm still stupid, but I'm not young. Um, I would notice that in, uh, in the shade early in June, and I, I didn't know really about the shad spawn back in the 80s and 90s. I just knew that in the shade on some rocky areas before the sun got up, you could catch fish. And then as the sun got up on those, the fish kind of went away. And so what I would do is uh, I would found out that I could catch them on a little bit lighter line than I normally throw. And then I'd throw it on, this is a, diving killer bee I think but it's a little longer than most of them and the story of this is I used it for years and it goes a little deeper on uh, say on 14 pound line and you're fishing rock so you really aren't in the timber a lot and they would hit this and I think it was because they wanted you know the, the shad maybe were smaller they were spawning whatever and it'd go just a little deeper and we would catch them till uh, after the sun got up on in, on a June day and you could usually catch yourself uh, a decent limit doing that. Now I broke that bait. Uh, story is a snake tried to get in a boat, and I slapped at him with this, and it broke the bill out of it. And I've really, never, I know a lot of guys uh, have tried to find me one just like this. I've got some other diving killer bees, but they're just a little shorter. And that's the thing about the Bagley's baits is none of them are made the same. Uh, so I've always tried to duplicate that. So I've got some others, but uh, they're not exactly like this. This holds a little bit bigger hook. It might hold a number four or number five. So then as the lake, as you get uh, later in the year, the shad uh, move, get bigger, and you want to throw probably more something close to a B2, or I like the, uh, I like the Zoom Ed Chambers baits. Uh, this is an E2 in the summer, and I like to throw 
uh, the balsa baits around the wood. And again, at Truman, you're mostly fishing uh, you're mostly fishing wood, except for a few times of the year. So the balsa baits really work good around the wood. They you can bow string them off, and you can uh, uh, throw them in really shallow water. So as you get later in the year, sometimes you can go to a, a more a bigger one. So a B3. This is an E3, which is like the Ed Chamber. It's an Ed Chambers E3. And this is a balsa B3. And um, so, you know, even this fall, this is the exact bait that we fished anglers in action with this fall that uh, I used both days. You can see I beat the paint off of it a little bit. Um, the first day we probably had uh, 12 to 13 keepers and I, they mostly wanted this bait. Uh, I think I probably had eight, eight, eight keepers, maybe nine keepers on this bait. And, uh, then the next day, they, they I had two or three, but they did not like this bait as well as the spinner bait the next day. And so Daryl actually caught a few more fish on the spinner bait the next day. One thing I would tell you is that uh, when you're fishing shallow, uh, you wouldn't think that depth matters, but I think it does. And I'll tell you a story about that tournament. What happened was uh, on day two, and we, you know, we, we just needed a third of a pound in that tournament to overcome the deficit we had. Uh, and one thing that haunts me is on day two, I'd fished, uh, we'd fished a few areas and there's stumps coming off the bank and I decided to change and I went to a B3. So you can see there's a little bit of difference in the B3 versus the E2, all right? And one is what, the, the bill's a little deeper on the, on the E3 here. I said E2, but I meant E3. All right, and so I, I thought I'd throw this to give them a different look. Um, and. I think that turned into a being, being a mistake. We were going down the bank and uh, I bumped a stump with this and a fish waved at it. And I could see him wave at it and you know, the boil came up and he waved at it, but he didn't get it. And it looked like a solid fish. I could barely see him, you know, uh, not probably more than two foot deep. And I still think to this day that if I'd have thrown, been throwing the deeper one then, I think he, he probably, you know, maybe in three, four foot of water, just like I've, I've said before, uh, they don't want to come quite that far, so they they stay just a little further, and his strike zone was just a little short. And I think if I'd have used that little deeper bait, uh, I would have got that bite. And so that kind of haunts me because I think that fish might have helped us call. Um, now on the shallower flats, this one obviously works better because it doesn't dig in as deep. Now you can get around that with uh, with this bait if you use 25 pound or you know or a really heavy monofilament. It won't go down as far with the heavier monofilament, but usually I'm throwing 20, so. This one goes about you know a couple feet deep, maybe two and a half. This one maybe go three, three and a half foot deep. So that's kind of some of the things that uh, I did this last year. And as, as you migrate through the seasons there in Truman, you're throwing uh, a little different size baits. Uh, I like the the KBD bait too. Uh, it holds big hooks. Uh, and if you need a little smaller bait, if they're biting on say a smaller one like this old broken one. Uh, you can get them to bite on that and that works pretty good um, and it has a good tumble to it. Now I think uh, David Fritz, when he talks about it, he talks about the roll, but I like to have a good roll in the crankbait. Uh, most of the old big O's and they, they want to go side to side or uh, length, you know, along the, the uh, X axis, but these, uh, like especially these E2's, they will tumble a little bit. I call it tumble and that gives the fish a different look when they're looking uh, from below. You know, if you got a striation in the bait or a different color, you know, you can see that it flashes back and forth and it kind of acts in the light spectrum, it acts like a spinner bait because it, it flashes on and off and on and off. Okay, one last thing to talk about today. Uh, one is you can go to YouTube, That's a Good Fish, uh, the page on That's a Good Fish, and I've got a longer video that uh, I did with Peyton and uh, his team on crankbaits that's uh, on their page if you want to see that. Uh, one of the things that the guys at uh, Alders like to make fun of me is uh, they say I still use the pistol grips. Well, I don't use the pistol grips too much anymore. I do have some. I should have brought one in to show it. But uh, I like the shorter handles because I don't like... Uh, uh, Peyton's got a photo that uh, I think we're going to drop in here that shows Daryl and I when we were fishing the lake in about 81. And you can see that it was a flooded force. So you're not making very long casts because you can't. And so we kind of learned to throw short casts underneath roll casts. Well, what that does is it, it, if you roll cast and you got this long butt in here, it gets in your belly and it just irritates me. So I like the shorter handles, even, you know, a pistol grip sometimes. So I use shorter rods. Uh, 
unless sometimes I'm in the back of the boat and you really need to make a longer cast, but in the front of the boat you can position the boat and you can make uh, you can make shorter casts and control your uh, angles better. So I like the shorter rod and I like the shorter butt on them. And uh, so I have a couple of this. This one's effectively pretty long if you look at it, uh, because this is actually, you gotta be careful with these because I think this was a seven footer and this is a seven footer. But if you put them side by side and uh, you can see that the reel, so two and a half to three inches of your butt is is not where the reel is at. So the effective length of the rod, if I go all the way to the other end here and I hold them equal to equal, then the, if you can tell down here, the longer rod is actually shorter. All right, so the effective, even though the one rod is seven and a half foot, uh, the other rod is a six and a half footer, uh, because of the way the reel sits um, on the butt, if I'm gonna move this up where it's effective, um, you've got another three or four inches that um, that is really not effective rod in my book. Now, if you want to use that for leverage, that's fine, but in crankbait fishing, I don't think you need to use it as leverage. So, a couple of things about rods there that I talk about when you're fishing in shallow water that for me, I like to keep the butt out of my uh, belly, and uh, and so I use shorter rods and uh, like to use the ones with the shorter grip on them, and they're hard to find sometimes with the shorter grip, and sometimes I even cut them off and then post the end back on. So, there's just a few things for about fishing shallow, Truman Lake with some crankbaits, uh, like I said, we got a longer video over on YouTube. You can look at it. I'd like to thank uh, Albers Marine and all the clan. I, I would tell you that if you ever watch the show's Cheers, um, there's a, you know, the song says, where everybody knows your name. Well, if you go to Albers Marine, it's kind of like that when I walk in. You've got Mark and Scott and Kyle and Glenn and Roseanne and Joe, and, and you feel like, feel like you're coming home there. Uh, a lot of good fishermen there, and it's really a good place to go buy yourself a boat. Thank you. Up next is uh, Justin Kernut um, giving us some insight on how to make a jig. These guys have been fishing a long time, so let's check it out. Welcome to Albert's Virtual Boat Show. My name's Justin Kernut. I go by Jess. I'm here with my wife, Brenda. We have team fished since we got married, which is running on 19 years now. What I would like to talk about is if you're out and about uh, making jigs, if we're out and about running a circuit and you get on a good bite on a certain color, go by the local tackle store because you're just about out and they don't have it. Instead of scrambling trying to find something else, we carry just a little assortment of uh, the jig heads and skirts and stuff. We can make ours on the fly. If we need to uh, specialize a color, uh, we've got everything that we need. What we carry, and it's in this little pack about box here, we have an assortment of different colors. Um, just your standard. We've got the skirts, scissors for cutting it, just your standard colors, and we also carry the jig heads. Um, various different sizes say well different sizes because rate of fall means a lot in in catching bass on the jig uh, but it's real easy all, all you got to do got a little tool here you slide the skirt or the collar on the tool Pull that off. Say you're going to make a uh, what they called old school. Another thing to consider uh, is the number of strands in the skirt. If you do a 30 strand skirt, it'll fall faster than a 40 or 50. Most of the time, we use 40. The flats come 20 strands to a to a flat so just fold them in half on a on a full skirt you want the uh, collar 
just slide it off on there not quite in the center because when it folds over it makes it makes all of the strands the same length what we're doing is a half ounce football head with a full skirt of course in nature dark always goes to the top but when you get ready to slide this on moisten the shaft of it so it'll slide on easier and you just thread it on pull the way up now you still got the the uh, ends on the tabs but that's okay because you're going to trim this just a little bit past the hook here and of course you make a mess when you do this but now you've got and you can do you can add whatever accent colors you want to but now you've got a full skirt half ounce jig it'll save you save you a lot of times out on the water um looks like you're about to run out what they're really biting on takes two or three minutes you're back to fishing uh, you're not distracted by trying not to lose that your last jig but i hope that helps um it's something the wife and I had got doing when we was running. We fished from Lake the Ozarks, uh, plumb down to uh, Lake Nat uh, Natchez, Louisiana on the Red River. Carrying this has saved us a lot of times. Thank you. Up next is Kansas Bass Federation Nation. Um, these do wonderful things for kids' events and other things. Um, I highly recommend you get your kids into fishing or hunting or what it might be in the outdoors. Um, this is a very, very important thing that we do this, um, especially in these times of crisis right now. So let's check it out. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Turner, KBN Vice President. We first would like to thank Albers Marine for giving us the chance to participate in this year's event. Our youth program, headed up by Travis Burt, starts at eight years old. We also have high school and college events as well. So if you have kids or are one yourself and interested in fishing, please reach out to us. Youth programs and schedules are available at kansasyouthbass.com. This site has all the information you need to learn how you can fish in junior high, high school, or even college. The youth also have a Kansas Youth Bass YouTube page. If you would like to fish as an adult, ksbassnation.net is the place for you. You will find tournament schedules, pictures, and information. And the KBN Officers link has contact information if you have any questions. So if anyone is interested in bass fishing at any age, check out one of these resources. We would love to have you join us in 2021. Once again, we'd like to thank Albers Marine for this opportunity. And even though we can't be together inside due to COVID, we hope to see all of you enjoying the outdoors at a lake, pond, or river near you. One of our pros here, Chad Allison, talking about Alabama rigs. He is a freak when he's throwing these things, man. He's won numerous, numerous big tournaments, especially in the last couple of years. Um, this is something that is new to fishing and it is a great thing to learn about. It's Chad Allison here, Toyota Series Pro. I just wanted to talk to you just for a second. I know it's cold, it's January, it's cold out. You guys are probably enjoying the Albers Marine Virtual Boat Show right now as we speak. Um, I just want to talk to you just real quick about my setup for the Alabama rig. This is the perfect time of year to throw the A-Rig. Um, I want a lot of money on this particular rig. And I'd just like to take just a second to show you my setup here. I'm using a Luz Magnum Heavy Cover Rod. It's a 7.6 uh, power is medium heavy fast. And I'm also using a Luz reel here that's the Tournament Pro Series reel. Uh, it's spooled up with brand new 20 pound cigar fluorocarbon line. Yes, I use fluorocarbon line. A lot of people uh, use braid, but I prefer cigar. Um, I feel like it doesn't cost me any, any more and it, and it doesn't cost me any more fish for sure. So that's that's my setup for that. I like the, the Young Flash Mob Junior. And obviously I like the Allison Ajax head. So this setup right here is lethal. And like I said, it's won me a lot of money. You guys need to put this outfit on, give it a try, especially these colder months. I catch fish on this bait all year long, but it really shines from now until about March. So 
go out, give this setup a try. You can, these are all available. You can get the loose rods and reels at Bud's Bait, Joplin. And you can also get the Allison Ajax heads at uh, Albert's Marine or Bud's Bait, either one. Uh, like I said, it's a lethal combination. Go out and get yours today. Thank you. Been fishing 50 years. How do I get that bait that high? And that's Jim. Ah. <laughs> oh man, look at here. Get out of the back of that boat, buddy. Oh. This is Rob Freeman. And uh, he does drone coverage. So like if uh, you want some property done, some field work, hunting spaces, anything. Um, he's really good with the drone and can get good pictures for you in videos. I'm Rob Freeman, an FAA licensed UAS drone pilot. I passed the federal part 107 exam just over a year ago. So now I can legally fly drones commercially in all 50 states. Since then, I've been involved in many aerial photo and video projects with drones. And I found that drones are much more useful to business, agriculture, and individuals than I ever expected. Sure, I can take TV quality videos and photos of larger subjects like Big Brutus, Meadowbrook Mall, and real estate pictures. Large close-ups and always revealing. I've had video on the TV news, plus TV ad content for professional ad agencies. Drones can be used to create very accurate photo maps of any size property. I can take a series of several hundred photos of a property and stitch them together into a single measurable image. Then we can precisely figure out area, distances, elevations, and much, much more. This drone data can isolate a pile of rocks and measure the volume in accurate cubic yards. These land maps can measure crop health in growing fields, showing fertilizer needs, insect problems, mold issues, and more. Drone crop maps are one of the keys to precision agriculture. Construction companies are using drone maps and photos to verify work progress, and plan bids on the larger projects. Individuals can get stunning aerial views of their home or ranch that can be printed out or shared on your phone and computer. See more examples at freemandrones.com or better yet, call today and see how aerial views from a drone can be useful for your next project. Have drone, will travel. FreemanDrones.com Hey, up next is the 175 TF. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, check out the video. And I will be talking about the 800 SX from Tracker Off-Road. Hey everybody, Glenn Harrison here with Albers Marine. Come to talk to you with about a couple boats the pro team 175 tf here you see pictured in the video and the pro team 175 txw um, they're both alike boats one set up for more of the crappie that would be the tf and the other one set up for more bass and that'd be the txw um, these boats have a diamond coat finish on them so they really hold their paint really well they're easy to clean 
Um, these boats have an exceptional ride. They designed it off a bass boat, have a really good dead rise, and what that means is it lifts the boat so you don't get wet running down the lake. Um, if you have any questions or anything about these, give us a shout. Um, we'd be more than happy to take you out on the lake and let you take them for a test drive and see what you think. Hey everybody, who's ready to go for a ride? This is the new Tracker Off-Road 800 SX. Um, these things are incredible, especially for farmers, hunters. I mean, it's something you have to have. Um, it's the best in class idle sound, which that means when you're idling around, you can talk to your passenger. Um, really, compare it to the other ones, there's nothing that'll beat that. It has a thousand pound in cargo box with the tilt capability, so if you're wanting to carry dirt, hay, whatever, it's a good way to carry it there. Um, it does have 10, 10 inches and 10 and three quarter inches of ground clearance, um, which is leading in the in, in the class two. Um, it has a 2,000 pound tow capacity, which if you want to haul a trailer or a small boat or whatever down to your little pit or pond, um, it'll do that. It did a EFI um, liquid cooled engine, um, so these things are hard to beat. I mean, if you haven't driven one yet, I'd recommend you get out there and give one a ride. Joe's One Stop up next. This is somewhere where I spend a lot of time and all my other employees, we eat over there a lot. They have a great lunch special, um, lots of stuff to offer. Joe's is giving them away one pound of jerky. Make sure you comment. Here it is. Welcome to Joe's One Stop, located on Highway 69, just north of Arma, right next to Albert's Marina. Joe's One Stop is your full service country gas station with fully stocked deli, daily lunch specials prepared for you fresh right behind the counter to order. Our deli counter includes freshly cut steaks, freshly ground hamburger, snack sticks, and in-house made beef jerky. Joe's One Stop has recently upgraded their pumps so you can now conveniently pay 24 hours a day at the pump. No worries on those late nights coming back from Lone Creek. You can also purchase your hunting and fishing licenses at Joe's One Stop. Don't forget to stop into Joe's and pick up your favorite beer on the way to the water. Lone Creek's just up the road. And now for one of the most exciting parts about Joe's. In the back room is where all the magic happens. Fresh sausage, steaks, and beef jerky you've probably heard about. They're all made right here. And oh yeah, during deer season, don't forget Joe's will do the part that you don't want to. Joe's offers a lot of different options for processing your deer. Salami, sausage, and jerky, just to name a few. You want to add jalapenos and cheese? Joe's can do that too. Joe's knows you work hard on your so vacuum sealing is now an option on your deer. Come see us at everybody's favorite country gas station. Joe's One Stop, just north of Arma, right next to Albert's Marina, just south of Bone Creek. Have you guys ever needed a reel repaired or clean? I have the service for you. Double M Reel Service by Mark Moody. Um, we left his business card here and all his contact information. If you need reels repaired or cleaned, check him out. Buddy, we want to talk a little bit about new tackle and there's not too, too, too much out new, but I'm just gonna go over some of the things that are really good um, that can really help you catch some fish. The new thing is motion jig fishings. There are jigs, this is a half ounce brush gill candy. Um, these jigs will catch you a lot of fish. Um, next is the Z-Man Jackhammer. I know these are a little bit pricey, but they will outdo all the chatter baits and catch way more fish. And of course, the Umbrella Rig by Yum. They make a lot of different variations. Um, you can definitely go on YouTube and watch a lot of videos of a lot of people catching big fish on this. And the Whopper Plopper. 
one of everybody's favorite in their tackle box. I know you still have it, but if you're new to this, new fishing, this is a must have lure to catch fish on top water. And if you're looking to catch a lot of fish, but maybe not the size, and sometimes you do catch a big one, is the turd, the Ned Rig turd. Check them out guys. Mark Talley's next. He's gonna be talking about pre-spawn and spawn fishing on Grand Lake. Um, he's done really well on Grand Lake and won a lot of tournaments. Let's see what he has to say. I'm Mark Talley. I'm with the Nitro State team through Albers Marine. I wanna to talk to you guys today about what I like to do in early spring and during the spawn when the fish are starting, to, the big females are starting to move up and getting ready to spawn. So one of the things I like to do, I live on Grand Lake and it sees a lot of pressure. It'll have anywhere from two to four tournaments every weekend and sometimes even more. So these fish down here, sees a, they see a lot of pressure. So what I, one of the things I like doing is when the bite is really tough and you're out there and, and you're barely getting bit by anything, I will actually downsize and start throwing a split shot rig, just with a 16th ounce split shot. And what I will do, I'll rig that about six, eight inches up above my hook. And what I will actually do is put a eight inch magnum lizard. I still want a big bulky bait on there. Still want something that's gonna entice a big female to bite that bait. I may only get four to six bites a day on that bait. But all I'm wanting to do is just drag that like a Carolina rig. But all that split shot's doing is just creating just enough little silt from that bait instead of something bulky like a half or three quarter or an ounce with beads, you know, Carolina rig. And that right there really, really helps me get those extra few bites that maybe other people may not may not get. Another thing I like to do is anybody that knows me really well knows that I like throwing a Gene LaRue head. That is one of my bread and butter baits. Um, every spring, early, when the fish are in the brush piles, uh, you know, two to four foot brush piles and they're moving up to do their thing or rock piles, I will throw that hoo daddy and I like to throw it, I like to dip it either in chartreuse or orange. Uh, one of the two, it, it's, I will always have one of them dipped um, but I'll, I'll flip it on 20 pound cigar fishing line and no matter what the water color is, maybe it's two inches to four foot. Sometimes the water clarity depends on what I dip it in. If it's, if it's really clear, I may dip it in orange, kind of give it that more natural look of a crotted. If, if it's really stained, I may go more chartreuse, give it a little bit more flash. But what, I'll, what I like throwing it on is, uh, I'll throw it on a 6'10 or seven foot uh, heavy action rod. I'll throw it on a 3 16 ounce tungsten weight with a 4 rod tro car hook. And all I want to do is I just want that bait to fall real slow. You know, that when these guys are beating the banks for spinner baits or crank baits or A rigs, I'll go behind them and just throw this Texas rig behind them and I'll just drag it out there and, and every now and then just give a little twitch. I'll just drag it and give it a little twitch. I'm not trying to just go down the bank, just hop, 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 and just keep moving with it. I'm working just real slow to entice those bigger fish that are smarter. They're, they've seen a lot of baits, so they're, they're just, they're, they're tough to catch. And it, it's, uh, it's something that's worked for me a lot. That has been a very go-to uh, bait in, in all my life, pretty much. But all of this being, being said all that, would not be possible what for Albert Marine and Glenn and Rose. They do a phenomenal job at uh, helping us get this rigged up for our tournaments. Um, great people. Um, they they put us in some of the best equipment, best riding boats that that you can ask for. I mean, a person can go buy a boat anywhere you want, but the way Glenn rigs a boat out, he gets he makes it to where our jobs. He makes it easy for us. So if you guys are in a boat market for a new boat or even a used boat i suggest go look them up give them a call and go visit them with them they're great people and like i said i'm mark talley and i'll see you on the water up next is outback archery they have a great giveaway prize a one-hour session for a group of four for the virtual hunt or techno hunting 
they have a full line of archery, bows, arrows, uh, bow repair, um, lots of good things to check out in their store. Please check them out. Well, we started in Kansas about 2008, 2009, and then we were um, very blessed to move to Joplin, Missouri in 2013 and open up September of that year. Um, over in, in Columbus, where I, I live and grew up at, there was never anything like this. And uh, my friends, family, and, and all of us were avid bow hunters. And we always had to drive an hour somewhere to get our stuff worked on. So we just decided to kind of start learning on our own and doing things on our own. And it just led from that point uh, into a business. The only archery shop um, in, in Joplin, so we take pride in that. Um, we offer so much accessories in store. It's not one of the places where we have to order something every time you come in. We have an extensive amount of inventory in here. And as far as the tech work, we do everything from custom tuning, restringing bows, crossbows, uh, parts, uh, literally anything that the archery world could throw at you. We've, we've got the capabilities of taking care of it, um, as well as taking the products that you purchase from us and trying them out on our indoor range. Well, our customers are awesome. Uh, we love hearing their success and we love being able to help them through their their process of you know starting with a brand new bow and getting it set up and learning the tricks and trades of it to actually hearing about the deer they're getting on cameras and actually harvesting you know something that they've been tracing all year. We can bring them in here and we can get them set up uh, with rentals. They can come in and just rent a bow to make sure that they like it or make sure it's for them. And, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of people that come in, I have no idea what I'm talking about, and it's, well, you, you come to the right place, because we'll take you under our wing, and we'll, we'll show you whatever you need to know. And then we have bow packages from used bows to high-end bows for any budget out there. We have layaway programs, financing, so we've got all that that we can actually help the new, uh, new bow hunters to, you know, the, the high-end guys that have been doing it for years. The archery world is very, very, advanced nowadays with the technology and stuff so there's right and wrong bows for everybody um, there's a lot of bows that we carry that will fit just about anybody nowadays you can be so custom fitted to a particular bow and then we can custom fit all the arrows you know for for the exact length or size or what they call spine for every shooter and it just does so much for that shooter it helps them shoot more accurately more comfortably and they, they build um, confidence so with the right equipment you build confidence you love the sport more we host tournaments on our what's called our techno hunt it's a video simulated shooting range um, we host right now we're doing weekly tournaments on it we have one going on called the turkey bash and that's simply where you come in and you shoot at uh, turkey scenes we do try to host different leagues and stuff to keep people kind of involved we're very involved with all the schools in our area uh, with a national archery in the school program that has recently started we have a, a girl on staff that helps with lessons and stuff for those NASP shooters and stuff you know we've got a great staff of people here who love to talk hunting and you know they know hunting and they know the industry very well so you can expect a lot of knowledge and you can expect the latest and greatest um, gear bows and, and kind of everything that the industry has to offer uh, we stay up with all the high-tech stuff on the latest trends so we're kind of the that kind of shop that's just in style I guess you'd say Up next is Angler's Paradise. Um, you can go to this place and catch some monster bass. Angler's Paradise is giving two half day fishing trips. This is a great value. They have giant, giant bass. Um, so make sure you guys comment in the below section. Let's see what he has to say. I'm Don Kentner from Angler's Paradise at Liberal, Missouri. Uh, We've been over there since 1993. We are a uh, full service fishing camp. We do uh, bass fishing primarily. We do have some good crappie fishing on our private lake with over six miles of shoreline. The, uh, the place has three cabins that are uh, fully modern and available for rent. You can come and fish for the day, bring your own boat. You can rent a boat from us or you can take a full guided trip. 
You don't have to uh, spend the night in the cabin. You can just drop in and fish for a half a day or a full day. Uh, the fishing fees are $55 for a full day and $35 for a half a day per person. Senior citizens and kids fish for free if there's one paying adult in the boat. The cabins are $40 per night per person and uh, we have uh, a healthy population of bass with our lake record being 16 and a half pounds. Like I say, we've been over there since 1993 and uh, I've always uh, used Albers Marine as my, uh, my go-to for my boat maintenance. And uh, this is an incredible uh, place that uh, does excellent work on all of the equipment that I've had over the years. And I can't imagine a better place to, uh, to get your boat, your new boat, your used boat, or to have your stuff worked on. I hope you'll uh, give us a try sometime. Our uh, contact information is anglersparadise.biz or you can call us at 417-639-4111. Brent Greek's up next. Well, I've spent some time with him. We roomed together when we fished the uh, BFL Costa Series. Um, this guy is a master at skipping a jig. Here he is. Hey guys, my name is Brent Greek. Uh, part of the pro staff over at Albers Marine. Uh, we're doing a little bit of a virtual show this year. So uh, Roseanne reached out and the guys were saying how uh, we want to do some tips and tricks kind of a deal with uh, with our pro staff, kind of give you guys some information about getting out on the water, give you some tips on catching some more fish. Uh, I, I chose to talk about some jig fishing. Uh, that's what I love to do. We got a lot of opportunity with our lakes around here. It's a great great bait to be uh, you know versatile with um, and so within that I, I kind of selected uh, skipping a jig uh, something that isn't isn't necessarily talked about a whole lot uh, it's kind of a little bit more of an advanced technique um, but it it's one of those things that can really give you an advantage uh, out on you know whether you're just out fun fishing <coughs> or if you're out in a tournament um, you know, and particularly a tournament where you got money on the line or something like that. Uh, it's something that you can do that uh, gives you a little bit of an edge, I guess it would be. So I'm gonna talk about my uh, skipping setup. Um, you know, when you're talking about skipping a jig, uh, you got, of course, docks. Uh, whether it's Green Lake, Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rock, a lot of docks around our lakes. But it isn't just docks. I've, I've had a lot of tournaments where when that water gets high, you know, everyone's now out flipping. If you can skip, you can put that bait in places that those other guys aren't putting their bait. Um, we'll start with uh, the what I use as far as the equipment, uh, rod and reel. Um, this is a Shimano x Pride. It's a 7.2, uh, medium heavy. Medium heavy is important. Uh, you're gonna want something with some backbone. Uh, you know, some power to get them up and out of that stuff. But at the same time, you don't want, you know, all power. Uh, skipping a jig, skipping anything. You want a little bit of tip. And the reason being is you want that to load up and kind of slingshot that bait, you know, across the top of the water. Something to help you uh, get some movement, you know, pushing it back in those spots. <clears throat> if you just have a broomstick, you don't get that tip loading and then releasing and kind of shooting it back into the spots that you want it to get. Uh, this this reel in particular, uh, this is a new reel. Uh, it's a Corrado uh, MGL. It's a 70 size though. Um, when it comes to the reel, you know, get something that you're comfortable with. Uh, something that is easy to palm um, is important. <clears throat> and most importantly, get something that's fast. That one's an eight to one, brings in, you know, 32 inches of crank or something. Get something fast because you're going to be going in and out and in and out, uh, you know, of the cover, the docks, whatever it is. Um, so you're going to want something that picks up a lot of line quick, so you're more efficient, uh, make more casts, catch more, catch more fish. The line that I put on that is 20, 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I know guys that use 25, and there's nothing wrong with using 25. <clears throat> Don't go any lower than 20, in my opinion. Like I said, we're putting this bait places it shouldn't be, honestly. I mean, you're putting it over cables, you're putting it around concrete, you're putting it, you know, through 
limbs and everything else to get it back in these spots where other people can't get their baits. And when you do that, if you get bit, you know, you got to get it back out to make it actually count. So <clears throat> I never do less than 20. Uh, if you want to go up to 25, that's fine. Uh, we'll talk about the jig. Um, I, I, I usually make my own uh, jigs. I buy the heads and then I uh, put the skirts on them. Um, this is a boss jig. It's, it's called a dock knocker. But the most important thing that you need to be uh, concerned with when it comes to skipping is that head. Now this is kind of like what you would call an Arky style head, but something that's real, real flat on the back side. The reason is, is that gives it a lot of surface area. And as it hits the water, it's real flat and it makes it, makes it want to skip. A ball head jig will skip, but it just, it makes it a lot more difficult to skip. Uh, if you get a head that's actually designed for skipping, it actually really helps in the, you know, in the ability of doing it. Um, and then, you know, as far as the skirt goes, uh, my favorite skirt color, and I, I use it a lot, is it's called a magic crawl, uh, magic crawl swirl anything it's it's basically just a, a green green pumpkin uh, with some blue in it and it imitates a lot of stuff one of the main things that it imitates is uh, bluegill actually it looks really good in the water so then you got something like you know it could be a crawl or it could be a bluegill and it just I feel like it ups my chances on catching fish um, and then the thing that I pair it with when I'm skipping nine times out of ten it's a sweet beaver. This is a Reaction Innovations uh, 4.20 sweet beaver. It's the standard size matching uh, trailer. It's Magic Cross Swirl. Uh, you get that up on the jig. This is what the total package is gonna look like. Um, make sure that you take some super glue, uh, get, it, get it up on there, uh, super glue that, that top part there just to help keep it on. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, the reason that I go with that <clears throat> over other trailers, and you know, if you got a brand that you like, that's fine. Uh, but just make sure the back side of the bait is wide, wide and flat. And once again, all that comes into play when it's skipping across the water. If it's got more surface area to catch, you know, it's just like skipping rocks when we were kids down at the creek. You'd pick the one that's, you know, perfectly flat and it'd skip a mile. Well, it's the same thing. You're getting flat surface and flat jig. All that comes into play. Uh, I usually flip a, or skip a 3 8 ounce or a half ounce. Um, nothing crazy there. The, the higher you get up in that weight, kind of the harder it is to get it to stay on top of the water. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that pretty much is the breakdown. Um, as far as locations, uh, specifically docks, people struggle. You know, if you go to Grand or if you're at Lake of the Ozarks and you see all these docks, you're like, where do I even begin? I always advise people, try and look past the docks. You know, try and pretend the docks aren't there for a moment. Look at the contour lines, look at the bank. The fish are there because of what is, you know, the, the structure. Uh, basically what the the cover is the dock basically in my opinion it's like you know if they're on flats well so go to a flat and then you know if there aren't docks they would be on the the lay down log well if there are docks there that that log is now just being replaced with a dock they're using the dock just as cover basically to to sit underneath and ambush you know and eat and so there, you got to remember that, you know, every dock isn't the same. If, if there's a dock on a channel swing, uh, you know, there, here comes the channel and it swings right off there. Channel swings are great. They've been great forever, whether, it, you know, it has a dock on it or not. Well, you put the dock on there. That's what the fish uses in that spot to ambush the prey. So that's well, where they're going to be set up. So that's that's my advice on, uh, on dock fishing, skipping skipping a jig um i think you know it's one of those deals that takes a lot of time a lot of a lot of practice 
but anybody can do it. You just gotta, you know, put in the time and try. Uh, be sure and fill your spool uh, a little less than what you normally would. Um, the higher you fill your spool with line, uh, generally speaking, the more backlashes you're gonna get. So don't be afraid, you know, when you're starting out, fill that thing halfway full. I mean, it, it won't backlash near as bad, and you're gonna have a lot, a lot better, you know, success keeping it from over spooling and backlashing on you. Um, and then, like I said, just practice. You keep doing it and doing it, you get better at it. And, uh, you know, it, it really does give you an advantage. There's a lot of guys out there that haven't taken the time to learn how to do it, and they can't get their baits where you can get them. And a lot of times, if there's a lot of pressure, those fish get places where the baits ain't getting to them. So you put your bait in front of their face and they're willing to bite. Um, so anyway, guys, that's my tip. Uh, big shout out to Albers. Uh, we we want to thank them for everything that they do. Uh, be sure and stop by. They're open uh, six days a week. Uh, stop by if you need to get anything, get any of the supplies. I'm sure they could hook you up. And, you know, of course, with anything boat related, uh, Glenn could take care of you guys. So. I appreciate the time. You guys have a good year. Next is Bone Creek Gun Club. You guys need to get your membership to this to go shoot your guns. That has, has an awesome range. This is Bone Creek Sport and Gun Club. P.O. Box 512, Pittsburgh, Kansas 66762. Phone number 620-249-0938. We're a club open to members only. Um, we are open year-round to shoot whenever except for when deer season's rifle is in. Um, they also have uh, conceal and carry courses, um, and they do have some target shoots available for competition shooting. So if you have any questions, please, or want to become a member, um, it's 620-249-0938. You guys looking for guns? BN Hunting is the place to look for them. They have all your ammo and gun needs, um, and they do gun services. Check it out. BN Hunting Supplies. Web address bnhunting.com. Address 131 East 6th Street, Mapleton, Kansas. Phone number 620-743-3496. We do have some odds and ends. First aid kits. Double cases of tanner rack. Play pigeons, case prep center for reloaders, and some other stuff. The ammo is also getting a little low. Um, and you can see this handgun. And then you have some here, some rifle and shotgun stuff. Ammo wise, not a whole lot. Um, so. Guys, due to all the COVID. You know, they've had a lot of trouble getting a lot of stuff, but be patient. They'll get it back in. Hey, everybody. We'd like to, uh, we've been here 35 years, and we'd like to thank everybody for their business and everybody for watching the show, and we really appreciate it. And thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. I'd like to introduce you to Helena, and she has worked very hard on putting this production together and we really appreciate it and we're so excited to see it and uh, we want to give her all the thanks for all the time that she's put in it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.